Hi, I'm Trey and welcome back to part four of my tutorial on colouring in this fairy by um, Meredith Dillman. Um, we got to, well I got to the dress section last time and I realised it was going to be quite a lot of viewing to try and do all the dress at once. And I'm aware of, you know, how long people have in time. So I'm going to now uh, attempt to finish off the dress. I was doing the dress in uh, reds, orangey reds and yellow. Um, I'm going to continue to do those colours as I'm working on a limited palette. Uh, so the rest of this dress will be done the same as the top part. As always, I look to do my highlights first. This one's going to be slightly com more complicated because some of the sections of the dress are behind or underneath. And I've also noticed here that that part there I thought was part of the dress is actually part of the ribbon, so I'll have to go back and do that. Uh, so I'll leave that bit piece till later on. So highlights. Yellow, um, this section here, I believe, would be lighter. It's not overlapped too much with anything else, so I'll do that in yellow. Light pressure, I will start with light pressure. Gets further up, it probably overlapped a little bit there by the previous bit, so next section beside it that's highlighted section it's rolling upwards now this part here um, is slightly overlapped again by the previous layer so i'm going to put the lighter shade there same with the one before beside it right those sections here that is on the outside so again i will just do the part of that highlighted now the rest of this is going to be underneath so I won't be doing a lot of yellow inside I'll have to use the dark colours I'll finish off the outside sections first so that is dipping in woods here I'm going to do that on the medium yellow for now um, inside that fold darker same with this section now that's inwards just like it was here that is actually dipping down so I'm going to put the light lightest red there on this side picking up again inside there that will be darker because it's in the folds of the dress and that one is covered up and overlapped there these sections here are probably overlapped in this section here going towards i think will be darker because it's near the the fold do that again you can always change this as you're going along I'm going to do that later, that top section. And go on. And darker underneath there. Overlap by previous fold. Now I think I've got all the outside done. So I'm going to do the darkest red now 
highlight. And then I think it would be the darkest. Inside there, around the edge of the line. I tend to use lines to give me an idea of where my highlights and my darker sections are. I'm going to do those layers again. I'm going to focus on the outside first before I do the inside, the underneath of the dress. And I've done about three more layers for each of those colours. Um, and I think I'm going to try now a, a light blend layer and see how that works. I coloured in the piece of ribbon. Um, one of the challenges, I suppose, of doing adult colouring designs is the detail and working out the detail. Uh, and I like that challenge. It uh, makes you think and you have to adjust as you're going along. These uh, Marco refined pencil blend quite nicely with this uh, blender pencil. They're quite soft. Right, and I'm going to now try adding a little bit of purple to darken in the darker sections. Gives a little bit more depth without being too dark and muddy, of course. I don't like the uh, Trying to avoid the muddy effect. I've never been able to get away with black pencil for highlights, you know, for darkening in shadows and that. It just looks dirty when I try and do that. I'll now go over the those sections again with the darkest red I'm using. I need to do that line there a bit darker. A medium orangey red. Feather it in there. I'm going to go over all of that now with my yellow to try and to soften up the uh, lines between the colours. Right, that's the top section of, of the dress. I'm going to be doing the underneath sections now and trying to work out how those lines work. I may use my yellow as underneath uh, the lightest, the medium orangey red, just to lighten up slightly. So I'll do those sections first. 
I kind of like doing a fancy dress. It's it's a wee bit of a challenge. Um, and I'm not, um, you know, a seamstress or anything. So I don't quite always know how falls work and material flaws. So this is an interesting challenge to do something like this. I think that's there. And again, I'm just using the lines as a guide. Right, so I'm going to do my medium red, which is the orangey red. I'm going to now fill in the rest of this dress, which is the underneath section and will be darker. And that's just a rough uh, first layer for those two colours. Um, I'm going to try and add a bit more yellow because I don't think the contrast is going to be good enough for this underneath piece. I'm going to end up with just two colours. I don't think it's going to be much of a you know, change in you know the the fold, so I'm going to have to add a bit more yellow here. Right, the darkest red. I'll I'll go into the fold with the darkest red. Well, I think it will be the darkest. My, to make some kind of difference in how these folds work. Mm. Over, underneath there where there's overlapping. Do a little bit there. Behind this leg will be darker. Underneath piece there. Mm. And a little bit where the lines are between the folds. Just doing light layers here so I can adjust it and change it, if need be. And my foot. Underneath those layers there. With the dress. Uh, inside here as well would be darker. Behind those folds there. Mm. 
Mm. Right, that's a rough layout of where I think um, my light and dark is going to be. So I will add more layers to that and see how it works out. Well, I added more colour layers to those and it worked quite well having the yellow underneath the medium orangey red. I didn't want it as bright as the top because of course the, the light's hitting the top. This is kind of underneath so but it lightens it enough to give still give a bit of an highlight. So that's quite good. I often do that um, to see if, you know, if I'm doing something that is a front and back, I will put a lighter shade underneath so it's not quite as harsh. So um, I'm going to do a light layer with my blender now to see how these all work together. Normally when I'm doing my colour and I, I listen to audio books, I find that quite relaxing. Obviously, I don't want to do the tutorials, but um, yeah, I, I found it quite nice. It doesn't distract me from what I'm doing. As long as the book's not too engrossing. Sometimes I listen to, you know, quiet music as well. That helps. I've been using the blender pencil on this dress because I don't want to dumb down the colours too much um, and the blender doesn't take away any of the colours, it keeps the vibrancy. White can take away and make it look milky, which I don't mind at times, I want a more subtle effect but I want this dress to look really bright. Right, that's a, a blended layer. Now I want to darken it a bit more with the purple. I'm not pressing on hard with this pencil. Um, it's just a subtle light layer to darken in the shadow a bit more. Right, I'm going to go over those dark areas again with the darkest red. I never used to do as many layers as this. 
it wasn't until I saw the effects other people could achieve by doing so that I changed, you know, how I did my colouring. I really like um, the deeper colours, but you can only get that through layering. Now I'm going to go over all of that with the medium orangey red. I'm going to use that as the last blend. There's a section there further up. Mm. Felt should have been darker. Oh, now I'm lost with all my folds. I'm loving that bit. Mm. Ah, it's there. That little bit there. Now that's the dress done I, um, and I like the fact I've managed to get a slightly darker effect inside the dress and the top of the dress and that's just by using the same colours in a slightly different way. Um, that's the beauty of using coloured pencils. You can use the same colours in a different way and get a different effect. Right, now we'll see about looking at the poppies. I'm now going to have a go at doing these poppies. I'm just going to do the biggest one because I don't think we need to do all of it. Um, I mean, after you've got an idea, you continue to do other you know, poppies the same. So, as I have a limited palette. My poppy is not going to look like a proper poppy, but it will look interesting enough. Um, I'm going to put my highlights in first with the yellow. Um, I think erased as well. Flowers can be quite a challenge, really. It depends on how they're drawn and how you want them to look. I'm not brilliant at making them look very realistic, but I do enjoy doing them. I'm going to do the tips of the rose later. that one as well.
Well, the reason I've done the highlights there on that side is the way it's drawn. On these, the the petals are going down, but they aren't, so they're the highest part. Done that there. So the, the floating, the bending down on this one. But that one isn't, so I'll extend the highlight. Right, I'll try the uh, medium orangey red now and put those sections in. Right, go around that. Dips down there. Down there. And if I feel as I'm going along I need to adjust my highlights, I, I can do that. That will extend out there a bit more. Doing light layers as well, if you really feel that you've gone completely wrong, you can rub it out. These pencils work quite well rubbed out. Falls down. a different section of a petal. Um, highlight there. That'll help. Again, there uh, needs a bit more lighter. Put a little bit of highlight in there. Wasn't sure when I first looked at it if I wanted that highlighted, but I do now. Now, I'm not, don't be concerned about the fact this is kind of scruffy. I work best this way because you can it fills in as you add new layers. And also, um, 
I tend to feather into each other each colour works better that way so it does get tidier now I'm going to put in the darker sections where I think it will be darker I think all of that will be darker inside there because the petals folding over And then it's just the section that's closest to the middle. Now that comes out a little bit, so I'm going to put a darker highlight there and make that darker there to emphasise that petal. There's a dip there, so I'm going to make it darker there. Right, that's a rough first layer for all the colours. It is rough and I tend to go over those a few times now to fill in the gaps and feather it into each colour. So I'll do that now, I'll do that off camera. I have done a few layers, well three layers on the poppy and it's starting to come together now. I always tend to be quite scruffy at first until I know, you know, I was going to work out. <coughs> <clears throat> a bit croaky there. So I'm going to do a light blend. I'll have to be careful how I do this blend because I don't want the dark to go into the light too much. So I'm going to have to work around my highlights a bit more carefully this time. Just a light pressure. So I can add more layers on. Now I'll blend the red sections. Right, that's one light blend done. I'm going to now put in some purple to darken it up a little bit in the darker sections. I'll be inside here where it, the petal bends over.
and these sections closest to the middle. This dip here. Again, I'm using the lines to give me an idea where the shading is. Right, I'm going to go over again with the darker areas and using the red. Do like the way the purple darkens the red without making it muddy. It's a nice colour. Right, and I'm going to do another layer of my lighter red to darken this in a little bit. And I've overlapped into the yellow, soften that as well. Overlap the darker areas to deepen that. And now I'm going to go over all of it, apart from the really darker sections in yellow. This is going to be almost like a blended layer. Gives it a nice glow. I like that effect. Now I'm going to do the middle and I'm going to use the greens. Again, because of my limited palette, I can't really do a poppy colour. So I'm going to... Do this in a brighter yellow. And I'm 
the edges in the green. This is a light green I'm doing for the tops of these. I'm not quite sure what they call them, really, these little parts of a poppy. And I'll darken in the darkest green for this project just to give a bit of interest and depth. I'll also go around the edge of the yellow and my dark green. It doesn't matter if it's darker because the yellow will lighten it up. Right. Go to the lighter green again. And one for the yellow. Works quite well this, even though it's not as dark as what the middle would normally be for a poppy. Um, I use my medium lighter green, see if I can... Yeah. Bring the shadow up a little bit. I don't like to do anything too complicated to be honest, I'm a whatsoever's easiest really. Right. So that finishes that poppy. Now that'll be the end of this tutorial. I will finish off uh, this design you know off camera and we'll be posting up on Facebook and um, I don't feel that I need to do all the flowers doing one of them gives you an idea how to do a poppy or how I would do a poppy the colour scheme I think works really nicely I mean the blue the green and the orangey red really complement each other and You've worked with four colours, which is really good, a limited colour palette. So it's, it's a nice challenge and it can make a, a project look quite balanced. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I will be doing more in the f near future and I'll see you again soon.